Hi, I'm Helen Milton, Health Walks Coordinator for Derbyshire Dales District Council. Today, we're recording a cow awareness podcast because several of my volunteer walk leaders have mentioned that they would like to know a little bit more about walking through fields of cows with their groups. So, I'm at Cow Close Farm in Birchover with local farmer Henry Holland. Shall we go in the kitchen and meet him? Hello, I'm Henry Holland. Um, I am a beef suckler cow farmer and pig farmer in uh, Birchover in Derbyshire. Um, Yeah. And how long have you been in Cow Close Farm, Henry? Uh, We've farmed here since 1975. Was that your dad before you? Yeah, that's my dad before me, yeah. So you've grown up around cows and... Yes, absolutely. All my life, I've even when I was younger than that, it was uh, cows, yes. All cows. <laughs> so today, what the reason I'm here is because I've had lots of questions from walkers and from my walk leaders uh, about is it okay to be around cows with people, with dogs? And I thought that was such a great question to actually bring to Henry because he's obviously worried about it from his perspective. So I've got a few questions I'm going to ask Henry. We're going to let him tell a few stories. So my first question Henry is, is it okay to walk through a field of cows? My answer to that, yes. Yes it is okay to walk through a field of cows as long as you follow certain uh, certain safety concerns. So, leading on from that then, just naturally, well, what would they be? Well, what should people think about first? Firstly, visually look around them to see where in the field the cows are and are they uh, blocking their path through to the other end of the field. And that's a, a very important uh, thing to be doing. Um, but then, secondly, if you can ascertain what the actual cows themselves i.e have they got calves with them that's that again is a very important um, aspect of so it. is there just one time of year that cow, cows have calves or are they now having cow calves all no through cows the year? can have calves all year long but it'll be the the work the cows that are worst are the cows with the small calves with the baby calves right because they are being very protective over their calves so if you see a field of cows with small calves or Mm. even a bit smaller bigger than small yeah would you avoid it completely or would you just try and walk around them yeah um yes yes if if you can, now the key we're not we're not mentioning the problem is when you've got a dog with you it's yeah. not particularly people on their own okay it's, so uh, so if so if i ask that question just about yeah. people on their oh, own just people on their own you would say just be careful and walk round yes yes i would i'd say just be careful and walk round and keep your eyes open and i'll be uh, and cows can be easily frightened you know if they're coming at you Give it them back. I'm not saying they would come at you on that. It's more when you've a calf with you, when they've got when you've got a dog with you. Sorry, but if you can give them a wide berth, go as far out of their area as you can. If they are on the path that you're trying to go through, give them a good wide berth so you can leave them. They're mostly chewing grass or lying there if it's a sunny day, and they'll not bother you at all. Okay, and if you need if there's an availability to go through a different gate uh, through a different field do you, would a farmer mind you just doing that <laughs> that's a million dollar question because so farmer like me i like to see people out in the countryside i like to see people having fun another farmer okay if you stray one foot off his footpath yeah it's the end of the world to it and that's an absolutely fine answer that's really good to know that it's, it can be okay, but it can also not be okay. Right, so generally, actually, maybe what I'm hearing is that people, if they're just, if they don't just, if they don't frighten the cows, they're all right. So just thinking back to people frightening the cows, Henry, what what behaviour might people do without dogs that could frighten a cow? Well, if they've got children with them and the children get running close to the cows, that can be a serious issue because the cows, again... 
you know, they'll, they'll run, for, they'll run, but then they'll turn. You know, they will then hold the ground and as a as a herd. You know, but the key here is just to give them a wide berth. And I'll, even if the farmer comes and sees you not on the path, you're far better that than walking through the cows. You know, you just. I think the key is give them a wide berth. Give the problem them a wide could, berth and keep yeah. calm and quiet. I mean, there could be a problem. Let's say you was coming to a field, but at the far end of the field, the cows was at the path where they, where you around come back the around the stile. Now, there's another issue, but, I mean, you can shoo. You know, they will shoo. you just got to keep a good eye on them. And, I mean, I will tell, I'll say, I will say this. The key here, the key, if you want to upset a farmer, grossly leave the gate open. if there's a gate that you have to latch or something make sure it's latched because what happens is two o'clock the following morning all the cows get out and the farmer at three o'clock is trying to find his cows everybody's ringing him up all his cows are out and that is a that's the thing that the farm will hate the most it, 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 it drives me barmy you know do you get any uh, warning that a cow is becoming anxious. Is there a difference between anxious and angry? Yes, yes, yes. I mean, if you when you're approaching a herd of cows, you'll some of the uh, for the going from the slumber position to the heads up and the the looking at you, and sometimes then they'll get up and obviously they'll be more concerned. But there, when we're talking about cows, you see. That yes, I've I'm, I'm probably gone a bit wrong there. But there's different sorts of animals in the field you, when you're coming across. I mean, I know we've talked about cows and calves, but when we're talking about young stock, which are heifers that are maybe running with a bull, they, they're a different scenario altogether. Because what they may do, they're curious cattle. And what they will do, you could be walking through the field, and even if you're trying to give them a wide berth, they might come towards you because they're curious of you even if you haven't got a dog up with you the key there is the the key there is you just to make a bit of noise and keep them away from you because what they will do if they get a little bit spooked towards you they could actually come at you and knock you over they won't mean to but that's that's young stock because there's a lot more life in them and they're just curious animals anyway and do you, have you known that to happen? Yes, yes, I have with myself, quite frankly. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the key, I mean, I, I, and I honestly think something that people could do, on, certainly with young stock, is most people carry a stick with them, and that's the best defence you've got. And don't be afraid not to, if, if the chips are down, use the stick. You know, we've got to be safe, you know, if they're coming at you and they're not looking like they're changing direction, Get the stick up, wave it around, make them look, shout at them, create at them. Uh, but that is young stock we're talking about sure. now. You know, heifers, maybe I don't know, eighteen month old style heifers. Yeah, yeah, know. yeah. So I'm now thinking that if you're just coming up to that field as yeah. a as a bunch okay. of walkers or two or three or a group, does it make a difference? Do you think less walkers, more walkers, or is it oh, dogs? Well, oh man, would it make? I'd say there's less like if there's more people, there's less likely they will come. Oh, that's so I would say, yeah, but I, just I can't feel. really. That's, that's me gut. gut that's, feel. that's a gut feel. Yeah. There's more, you know, there's more. More of you there means the animals are less likely to approach you. The younger yeah. stock, I would imagine. Yeah. I can't give you every answer on that one. Yeah, yeah. So let's say these walkers are just approaching a field, so mm. you're not in it yet. Okay. And you know you see that it's heifers, with yeah. or without a bull, yeah. whatever. Um, is there anything you might look for to see whether to enter the field or to look for a way round? Well, again, the, again noises. Again, <sighs> again, I mean, most of the time, the, the placid animals and they'll lie there or they're grazing there. <sighs> You've just got to be vigilant. You've just got to be vigilant and put, try and keep your distance. And most of the time, and if there's paths in these fields, the animals are used to people walking through anyway. So most of the time, you'll be okay. As I say, it's when the dogs are brought into play. Go on, then. When... let's talk about dogs. What, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> let's talk about dogs. Yeah, let's so, talk about Right, so all dogs? 
Well, yes, yes, all dogs. I mean, you're, the minute you have a dog with you, your chance of being hurt probably rises tenfold. Right. It really does, yes. Because when you think, prehistorically, obviously, they think the wool, the cows think the wolves, and they've got, especially when they've got little calves with them, they're looking to protect the calves. And generally, out of a herd of cows, you might get one or two real strong animals that will live, will, the, you know, you've got to keep your distance. Then, then it is important to give them a wide berth. It is. Do not really go through the middle of them with a dog. You right. know, you, you know, you've, then you have really got to be vigilant. Now, if you wanted me to talk about if they do come at you with a dog, if they do look like they are going to come at you and you've got a dog with you, the key here is to let your dog go. You, but I do know this, and I do know this, and I'll, I'll give an instance later. Whereas a lot of dogs will cower behind their owners, and that is the disaster. That is when things can go very wrong because you've got half a ton cow, you, dog behind you, and your piggy in the middle right there, and that is when it can go wrong. And that's happened There's, to you, or yeah. okay? Yes, I have. I have seen this happen. Yes, I have seen a ca- uh, a person between a a cow and a dog. Yes, it's not a good place to be. Not a good place to be. Um, Especially if the dog keeps following you when you're trying to but, get so out. So the, the key, the key, the first key is the dog has to be on a lead at first, is it? Because that's what we hear. Is that? Do you, do you know, it, it, this is a, it, it's a grey area, isn't it? It is a truly grey area, and you're never going to hundred percent judge what something's going, what a situation's going to turn into. I can only stress. Yes, keep your dog on the lead, but keep clear of the cows. Go make a good, good outrun around the cows, and then the cows generally won't bother you. They generally, to my knowledge, won't bother you. As I say, the problem comes again if the cows are around the stile at the far end of the field. Then, if you can find an alternative route out of the field, please do. But you've got to sit into a situation where there is no answer, and that would be it. Yeah. That would be worst case scenario. Cows around the stile. You need to get over the stile. You've got your dog with you. You have to come close to the cattle. And at that point, I haven't got an answer for that. And that is the truth of it. I don't. So you know, really, no good telling from the ever. farmer's point of view, I'm hearing you'd 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 try and find another route. Yes, yes, try and find a route. But I, but that what we're talking about might only happen one time in a thousand. You know, you might go to that style with your dog and get over the style and be absolutely fine. A thousand, ninety nine point nine percent of the time, but that might be just that one time that it doesn't happen that way. So, second million dollar question of the day: <laughs> Would you know, with you and your, my, I know your cows probably know your dogs, but would you know in a field with your dog of cows you don't know hmm. that those cows were starting to get? upset and you really shouldn't try and get out of that style what would what would you be listening for and looking for yes Henry? yeah yeah well definitely the cow being more aware of you being there the cow focusing in on the dog the cow when the, they won't focus on you they'll focus on the dog and when they start to focus on the dog it's time to retreat and basically go back the way you came because then the day nobody wants anybody hurt. no certainly absolutely. farmers don't want to see anybody hurt in their fields because farmers have a care of duty from the second you're in the field till the second you're out whether a tree drops on you or anything it's a farmer's care of duty so yes yes you've got to be focusing on the cows if the cows look like they are getting stressed but they're standing up they're looking more they're standing together there's another thing just tell me a bit more about that standing together (laughs) well most cows Pretty much, unless they're in a big herd of cows in a field, generally they'll, they'll the the group together, the cows, the calves, they all lie together. They go to the water shop together. They'll move around with a general following each other around. And when I say stand together, if they're all if they're in a group, they'll stand up and you get them coming forward towards you together. You know what I'm saying? So moving I'm saying? as yeah. one. I don't want to make them sound like this some <laughs> no. beast. We you are. Know, we are not. They just. Yeah, they more move, they more move together as not say a pack animal, but as a herd, you know, as yeah. a herd. So I think it's really important to to actually go on that point as well mm. that 
in general, would you say we should just be wary of cows? Abs- not abs- every time. Yeah, 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 no, yeah. Helen, that's perfect. Yes, wary but not scared. Don't fully believe being scared is the right answer. Wary is the best word we could use it. Again, again, with young stock. I mean, young stock can be as much of a problem as cows because young stock will, as you walk past them, they can come up behind you. That's a, a trait that they will do. You can be walking through a field. They're inquisitive. They're a bit bored, maybe, and they'll start to just get up behind you. And the key then is to keep facing them and say, if you've got to stick with you, Waddle your stick about, make yourself bigger than you are, make a bit of noise, and they'll they'll generally scoot off. They'll generally scoot off out of your area. But I must be say, constantly keeping an eye on where where they are and where you are to the, in relation to getting out of the field. Um, in my personal experience, I've always been mm. wary but not scared of cows. Yes. Um, I've seen a a couple of results of incidents but not really been part of them myself but when I've been most impressed is when my husband who as you know is six foot yes. four when he puts his arms out yes. he becomes really big and he That's, just yes yes he just make yourself gently, bigger than you are and yes. he just does that yes. with cows and I'm I, I like I don't know it just no it no I, 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 I think you've I it think you've said work. I think you've said a, ve- a very good point there I think if you could as you say, not quickly make yourself into, you know, a star. A star, star yeah. <laughs> but yes, and make yourself bigger than you are. But as I, say, I think, and most hikers do walk with sticks and get that stick waddling about, and uh, and yes. But if they do up the ante, i.e., they can't, they do keep coming. Then you've got to up your ante too, i.e., make a bit of noise, give it back to them, and. And hold you and, and a bit hold your ground because if you do run at that point, they will kind. They, some animals could follow you. You know, mm. it's a case of keep facing them and and retreating back to you know the style that you you're going to. And hoping your dog's not cowering behind you. Yeah, yeah. I mean, dogs with dogs with young stock won't be as big a problem. It's dogs with supple cows that are the problem. The dogs with the cows with the cars. With, it's more dogs with young stock. Again, they're inquisitive. Mm. They're not. It's not particularly a threat to them. It's. It, but again, when you do bring a dog into a field, you do increase your your risk. So, do you think, Henry, that cows are becoming more aggressive, or oh, do you pe- think people are becoming less sensible, <laughs> or neither or both of those? That's an I'll have to think about. Now, yeah. do I think cows are getting more? aggressive and that is a very very good question you once have... said to me that there was a french limousine oh yes yes yeah the, 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 the limousine it which is a which is a beef breed which a lot of people use around here it yes limousines are notoriously they're not i'd say they're aggressive but they are the balmiest beast out there uh, a bit a bit silly but when it comes to cows a, a crossbred Angus cow will probably be the best mother out there, i.e. more protective of their calves. But it's just different traits of different cows. Probably the quietest cows out there are the crossbred Hereford cows, which are pretty good, but not the Hereford bulls. They are they are a bit... A bit <laughs> naughty. A bit naughty. Because so, how it generally works. I'll tell you how it generally works. Yeah, do. The Frisian bread, this milk and beef, milk and beef, milk cows, beef cows. The beef cows are the crazy ones. The milk cows are the quiet ones. But the milk bulls, either Frisian bulls, they're the crazy ones. But the beef bulls are generally the quiet ones. Okay. And that's how it does work. Okay, so a, a, um, a field of uh, Frisian cows, we shouldn't really be worried about. Yes, and, and people these days do not put Frisian bulls out with cows. It just doesn't no. happen. Because they are, Frisian bulls are notoriously bad. Okay. and does yeah, a Frisian, Frisian cows are quiet. And does a Frisian bull look like a Frisian cow? You know, are they yes, he does white? a big version, but <laughs> yeah. obviously with different undercarriage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yes, sir. Um, so, okay, so dairy cattle, dairy cows, the ladies, yeah. are, are actually pretty... Serene. I would again always be aware, always be you know aware of your surroundings and be looking around all the time. But on the whole, Frisian and Holstein as well, 
which are the same, pretty much the same thing, are generally quiet. Well, they are quieter than than your beef variety cattle, which right. are all. If you if you go into a field with beef cattle, they're all melting multicolored bees. The yeah. that's you know where Frisian where your free, your milk cattle are generally black and white, yeah. or sometimes red and white Ayrshire style cattle. Oh, you see, mm. I've learned they're something. more oldy worldy cattle than. Learned they. something right there, Mr. Henry Holland. <laughs> um. Oh, that's really that's really interesting. So, so back to that first question: Do you think they're becoming more aggressive, or is is it just more in the news because we've got more social media out there? Well, the thing is, you're probably more people on the countryside, and more people, more out. people out in the countryside. So that again, on its own, will and I, yet yeah, I do believe that people are less aware of of grassroots, i.e., you know, they don't, they're not really in with farming these days. So yes, I believe they're less aware of the dangers. Do I believe now? And the, the one thing you asked me: Do I think cows are more? I'd like to say no, they're not, because I do believe farmers these days. It never used to happen, but farmers these days generally, if you know you have a crazy cow, you will get rid of it. But you've got to realise you've got one first before you can rid it. Go on. So with all these things that can go wrong but rarely do, yes. how do you feel? As a cow farmer, about footpaths on your land and people, do you manage yes. the cows in a certain you, way? Right. Yes. Now that's a good, good, good point. Right. We have one. We have, on all the blocks of land that we farm, there is footpaths on every block, which is an issue because we're obviously in the middle of the Peak Park. But with one particular that goes to the Nine Lady Stone Circle at the back of Stanton there, and that is a super highway for people walking. And we had a few issues, and uh, so what we decided to do was um, turn that land from cat from cows and calves going, or young, even young stock going up there, into uh, to either silage making, or we, now we grow corn up there. But I will say this because I do want people to know this. People go up there and we, we took all the walls out of the fields because the fields were too small that we could turn round in to make to make them useful for silage or corn. A lot of, a lot of people got upset about that, thinking the walls should, should, should have stayed in. But with what they didn't realise was we were saving these people by not having the cows up there so we could use the land efficiently. And now anybody can walk that path and I have 100% know that they are safe. So have you got some stories, Henry? Yeah, I'm yeah, I've got a few stories. I've got particular. a few stories. Yeah, no, I, no, the the my ultimate story was when we was I was carving some cow with car, with the farm at Yulgrave, which is in uh, yeah, well, Yulgrave near near Birchover. We was carving some cows in the back of the house, and every uh, behind the farm, and it was summertime, probably June time. And we was, uh, I was every 20 minutes, I'd look up the fields, just make sure you can, because when a cow's calving, you can generally, she generally goes off on her own or starts to do a bit of a dance, you know, you can tell. And uh, I just happened to look up the field, and I'm glad I did, because a lady had jumped in the field with a pushchair, with a dog, with the dog tied to the, pu- I didn't know this at the time, I could just see a lady in a field with a pushchair with a dog. I, my eyes went on stalks because she was heading towards what we knew was a cow that wasn't the quietest cow. And she just had, uh, we had a, it was a purebred Charolais cow that had just had a purebred Charolais calf. And it, it was beautiful cow and calf. So I jumped in my old Land Rover as fast as that old Land Rover could get up the field. I managed to get to the car to the, to the lady before she was about probably 20 yards from the car. Now the, there's no two ways about it. That cow would have, and it's the cat. When I got there, the car, the the dog was tied to the bush chair. It it would have been a disaster. She was going up to stroke the calf. She was going to stroke the calf with the child. I, I even now just thinking about it just make it just brings. My heart palpitating. So I got the lady in the Land Rover with uh, the, the little kid and the dog, took her to the side of the field, explained to her in the nicest way, because I'm never funny with people, the nicest way that please don't go near, you know, just admire them from afar, just don't go near them. And that was, uh, that was my work. If I hadn't looked at the field, that lady and the headlines would have read, 
Toddler killed, toddler by, killed cow. by farmer's crazy cow, and that would have been the headlines. So we've now been joined by uh, Sophie, Henry's uh, lovely wife. She's making a face at me. She's just making a cup of tea. And Carrie, hi, hi, uh, so we're, we're we're surrounded by two dogs, if not three. The cat's yeah, now eating out of the uh, out of the cat bowl. Let's so uh, we're very busy, and I think I'd just really like to say a very big thank you oh. to Henry and his family for allowing us into the busy kitchen here. The only reason I've been able to pin Henry down is because he's literally in a sling, having had a shoulder operation. Henry, would you like to tell everybody why yes. you had a hurt shoulder? Yes, well, a uh, 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 younger beast, so, a young sorry. fattened animal that generally yeah. is in the sheds that don't go out on the land, just... Um, just come well come at me some more I turned round it was there at me and uh, put my hand up and uh, uh, snapped to it it snapped, sorry, snapped me snapped right, did me wrong yeah so um, yes so henry's just been yeah. mended from yes, an in, so the well, farmer that's... himself can at times get into <laughs> trouble with the cows yeah, yeah, it's, uh... But I think the moral is here is that we shouldn't be afraid of them, should we? But no, wary. we're wary. We wary, yes, definitely wary, definitely wary, yes. Lovely. Thank Good. you, Henry. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for listening. If you want any more information about my health walks, then please email me helen.milton at derbyshiredales.gov.uk. Thank you to Jackie Parkhouse who produced this podcast for me.